Hi everyone. In today's video we're going to be talking about the multi-site weather forecast workbook for Excel. This is in a continuing series of weather workbook videos that we do. Weather workbook is basically a workbook in Excel that connects to the Visual Crossing weather data service and allows users to query weather data directly into Excel. Uh, you don't have to load it or any kind of export import scenario but utilizing the RESTful API and the web query system it basically pulls in weather data into your workbook and allows you to work with weather data directly. Today we're going to be talking about a variation on the weather workbook and again if you want to learn more about the weather workbook you can go to the Visual Crossing blog and look at the uh, weather workbook original blog which leads you to a lot of links of both downloading the workbook um, but also being able to get a lot of help with tutorials and things. And we also did a video that's posted on YouTube as well for Weather Workbook. And you could just do a search by Visual Crossing Weather Workbook um, and you can get all the information you want there. Um, just a quick background on the Weather Workbook for those of you who are new to it. Um, again, it's an Excel workbook that queries directly into the Visual Crossing system, but it uses the Power Query system uh, built into Excel pulls down the data and allows you to explore it. And inside the weather workbook, we've created a, a lot of settings. Instead of having to go somewhere and change those settings, um, basically all of the settings are available in the weather workbook from user entered cell data values. So for instance, if you want to query on um, Chicago, New York, and LA, you just enter those locations and then refresh the query. It'll send it along and pull back the data. And so that's the concept we're working on here. And one of the keys to the weather workbook is that it is modifiable. We provide this as a courtesy to our customers to basically allow them to um, either use it directly or they can also use it as a starting point for development. Perhaps they want to develop their own custom workbook for their users for a very specific scenario. They can start with the weather workbook, use the queries that are built in there and already predefined, um, and then just modify everything as they see fit um, to get the, the custom UI that they would like inside Excel. So the multi-site weather forecast workbook is an example of doing just that. Um, and so we'll, we'll show you some examples of that here. If you want to follow along um, outside of the video, you can go to the visualcrossing.com uh, slash blog area. Um, look for this uh, image right here of the world map with multiple forecasts on it. Um, and that's the blog um, that we're going to be doing the video based on today. Inside this blog, you'll notice that there's a couple download links here for the multi-site uh, forecast workbook, um, but also a simplified version. And again, we'll, we'll cover over what the difference is between the two here um, and, and what they're useful for. And this goes through a lot of great detail, including if you get to the bottom, um, it will talk about uh, customization. Um, how can I create my own uh, uh, variables for this purpose? All right. So let's um, jump right to it. We've already preloaded, downloaded the workbook from this page, um, and we'll go ahead and open that up. <clears throat> and you'll see the, the first um, sheet basically is a quick introduction into how to use it um, and what it's about. If we get into the second page, it's basically the settings for the forecast. So what we're trying, trying to accomplish here um, with this workbook is one of our number one requests that we get from users is the ability to query for a forecast weather and show it in Excel and have it refresh and in addition to that they want to do it for multiple locations and so let's say for instance you're a construction company and you're managing multiple sites and you have a hundred different work sites you can't reasonably look up the weather forecast for each one and understand what's going on at each of those locations for the coming uh, you know 15 days in the 15 day forecast and so as a part of that what you'd like to be able to do is to just in a single glance look at all 15 or all 100 sites or how many ever sites you have you want to be able to look at them and say oh this is below 32 degrees here i can't pour concrete or something along those lines um, people use this for you know you know shipping to addresses um, there's all sorts of different uh, uh, site forecast use cases but what we want to do is just make it really simple for users download this workbook enter in your key and just start working and so what we've done, if you're familiar with the weather workbook, we've already have the query and the query will pull back raw forecast data. And you can always go to the raw forecast page and see exactly what it brings back. On the forecast settings page, there's only a couple settings here um, that we really are focused on. One is the ability to enter in your own locations. So you just modify this listing green here to whatever your locations are. 
Over here in the advanced settings, you're going to want to put in your API key. And if you don't have an API key, um, effectively what you want to do is go back to the, um, the Visual Crossing web page and go to Visual Crossing and click on Weather Data and it'll take you to this page where you can sign up for a free trial. There's also a link in the Weather Workbook here to it. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, click over to this link, sign up for a free trial, or get your own subscription if you'd like. But either way, um, you need to get the API key. Once you're logged in, there will be an account button up at the right here. Um, let me log in real quick and I'll show you. So if I log in under my personal email here, there's an account button. If I click on that, it'll show me my account key immediately. Um, and you just copy that and you paste it right here where it says enter key here. Once we have an API key in here, the entire workbook is enabled to do whatever you'd like to be able to do. And in this case, we're going to be querying forecasts. All right. So the other settings here, we're using US instead of metric. And um, we, we have this fixed, so it's a daily forecast. So we set it to 24 and locked it for this case. Um, you can uh, change the start day, start, and end time, which determines what is a day for you. Business day starts at 8 a.m., ends at 5 p.m. type of thing. Um, we, um, we don't anticipate a lot of customers wanting to use this, but you, you certainly can. Again, it makes sense for a lot of businesses who are worried about the forecast only during a particular time. Again, construction pouring concrete, they're only worried if it's below 32 when they're actually on site and working between certain hours. So you may want to set an 8 a.m. time here or something along those lines to um, to make this more even more accurate and more useful. Um, the big, big change from Weather Workbook um, is um, the ability to add in threshold formatting. So again, if we're taking our construction use case here and we want to be triggered, when does the temp warning, when does it get below 30? Um, this is a threshold value, so the user can set this value. And regardless of what uh, weather units you're working with, these are just raw values. It doesn't have to be in Fahrenheit or, or Celsius. Um, you can put this to whatever you'd like it to be. Um, just set those values. And so you'll notice that we've, we've started this workbook with three weather variables, which are the most common that people ask us for. Um, however, those are modifiable as well. And as we get into the next page, we'll, um, we'll show you a little bit more. So the thing to take away from this is forecast settings, enter in your locations, enter in any thresholds that you want to be warned at, and you can just go with the defaults for now if you wish, um, but you do have to enter in an API key. Once that's that, that is there, on the multi-site forecast page, what we have here is a pivot table. And in an advanced video, we'll go through exactly how we create this pivot table. But just know that this pivot table is tied directly to the Power Query um, inside of Excel. And so we're all using all native Excel functionality here. Um, no special tricks, um, not a lot of um, uh, challenging functionality here. We basically just said from the Power Query table, turn it into a pivot table, and this is what we get. Um, if you were to right click on this and then say show field list, um, you'll be able to see exactly um, the, that it is a pivot table and how we created it. And you'll notice that we have our values um, for our weather metrics um, as well as our addresses on the rows, and we have the dates on the columns, um, and the values that are defined here are uh, the different temperature values. And if you read the blog, you'll notice that it, show, it walks you through an example of, let's say I didn't want precipitation, but I wanted um, chance of precipitation, which for some businesses is oftentimes even a, a, a stronger indicator than actual precipitation. People won't go if they think it's going to rain rather than if it actually did rain or was going to rain. So you can um, check this and uncheck this, and you know, you'll see it switch out the different variables here. Um, you have a couple additional modifications to do when you do that, um, but they're relatively simple, and the blog does walk you through it. So we have a pivot table, and it's basically showing us the forecast for the week ahead. And so it, you'll see also the thresholds that we set. We set to 30 degrees. So anything under 30 is going to get highlighted in purple for min temperature, and for max temperature, I believe we set it to 70 degrees. Anything over 70 is going to be highlighted here as well in uh, maximum temperature. And for precipitation, um, if there's any amount of precipitation over 0.5 inches or greater, um, it will flag that as well. So the value here is basically you can have, a, you know, again, a list of as many locations as you'd like. And um, you can just simply see the forecast at a glance and understand what's going on at all your sites. So let's just make a quick change here. Let's, um, so we have five locations here now, and let's just say um, we want to add um, 
Chicago, Illinois. All right. So before I go any further, one of the things I should point out is one of the reasons why Visual Crossing is one of the only weather services that can do this is because of our support through the API for multiple different things. One is that you can, when you pass data to the service and ask it to bring back data, you can get it in CSV format, which loads directly into Excel. Um, other weather services, everybody requires JSON, which requires additional scripting um, or coding of some type to process the data. We return it in CSV and it loads immediately into Excel. Um, same thing with relational databases. So it's one of the features. The second feature is the fact that you can query multiple sites in a single go. So if I have a, an entire range of data in Excel, I could just pass it through it in one pass and get the data back. Um, other weather services require you do location by location. Query one, get the results. Query two, get the results, join the data. Um, we don't do that. We, we allow you to query um, up until whatever your row limit is um, for the license level that you have. And so that's very, very powerful. And the third piece that I'll point out is the fact that we do geocoding on the fly. Well, what does that mean? Well, geocoding is the, the capability of taking any of your locations and processing it into lat lon, latitude, longitude, such that when we do the weather lookup, um, we can get the data back specifically for that location. The weather data doesn't understand Miami, Florida. It only understands the latitude, longitude. So your, your um, system needs to basically pass along latitude, longitude. We do this for you. Um, other weather systems do this, but they make it a separate call. So you have to call for your location, get the latitude, longitude back, then make the weather call. We do it all in a single pass. And we also you notice that um, because we support Excel so strongly, um, it can be zip codes. It could be, um, it's international as well. It could be any city internationally. Um, and it also could be an, a full address string. So here we have the address of the White House, but it could be any address that you, street address that you have. And all of this data could be mixed. You could pass it in. Um, if you don't have a full address and just want to put the zip code, that's fine too. Um, but it will pass all of this in one pass and bring it back all in one pass, directly loaded into Excel. And so that's the, the powerful nature of the, of the Visual Crossing um, Weather Data Service API. And um, we're taking advantage of that here. All right, so we updated to Chicago, Illinois. Um, and let's just for argument's sake here, we're going to change this to uh, maximum 75 and we'll leave and we'll um, leave the minimum at 30 and the, the precipitation warning we could change to um, 0.75 let's say just to see if we get anything for a lot of rain if we get any warnings from that. All right, we already have our key entered in the background here so we don't have to um, delete it but you will have to have your key in here. Now we're good to go. There's a couple different ways to refresh the data source at this point. Um, separately, you, if you want to build a button that just says refresh, you can do so. You can set the refresh policy to open every morning when you come in. You can set the refresh policy to open on a timer. Um, and you can also do it manually. So one way is to go here and hit refresh all. Um, another way to do it is to actually go to the grid that you want to update, right click and hit refresh. And so. Um, some, sometimes when it updates the table, it wants to get your permissions for the first usage to understand exactly what, um, whether or not you want to replace the data that was already there, and we did. And you notice Chicago, Illinois, which we added, is now in here. Um, our, we've updated our forecast warnings for high temp, and we also updated it for, for the precipitation. And you'll notice that those are dynamic. So these are all color-coded based on the forecast that we were working with. And um, this is the... Um, ideal scenario for, for people who have a lot of locations to deal with. Um, and so there's a couple other settings on here from Weather Workbook. Like I said, you can look at the raw data if you wish. On the forca uh, raw forecast data, um, this is a separate table. So you can basically go in and refresh this as well. Um, this is useful because if you want to see more um, weather variables um, or if you just want to compare the data, but you'll notice that this is updated with all of the latest data as well. Um, and you can peruse that. Um, and finally, in admin settings, this is a don't touch page. Um, basically, it's just how we send the strings across. If you are a coder or you're a scripter or you want to modify this page, um, you might get into some more advanced features. The nice thing about this is if you wanted to, you can cut and paste this page here and um, uh, this string, and you can paste it into any browser um, and get the data back as well. 
All right. Um, the next thing I want to show you real quick was just um, the simplified version of this. So there's a lot of, um, of sheets on here, five sheets. And we just want to show what's possible if you start getting it down to the bare minimum and moving things around. Because again, um, on the forecast settings page, as we talk about a lot with the weather workbook, if you want to move this locations away from this sheet, you could literally just select it and cut, cut and paste it. You can't copy and paste it, but cut and paste it. And the same thing with any of these warnings. So for instance, let me select that max temp warning. You notice it's named max value. If I cut and paste this, I can move this onto the page with the data and have users update it right there on the same page. Um, as long as this, this uh, defined name goes with the cell, um, it, will, it will also translate. So let's go over to the simplified page and you can see the results of what, um, what we did here. So we're going to go ahead and click over to the um, simplified version. All right, here we go. And you'll notice there's only two sheets. And if you really wanted to, in this admin sheet, you could actually just um, go ahead and choose hide, and it'll go away. And so now, if you're trying to produce something for end users, and you just want a single, show me my forecasts, let me enter the data as I want, and then go, um, here you go. It's all in one page. We, we cut and paste the locations table over here. Um, it's still named the same. And just like we said with max temp, we move this to this page, but you notice it's still named max value. Uh, min temp is min value, etc. And the forecast is right there with you. So I, I have my key entered separately, um, but you'll enter your key here and you're uh, good to go. So for instance, let's say if we wanted um, to change one of these values to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we'll go ahead and just right click on this and we will um, go ahead and refresh the data. It will again um, query and you'll notice that Charlotte, North Carolina is now in here and we get to see our entire forecasts for these three variables. Again, you can modify them as you wish, add, add some or remove some, but we have an immediate view of our forecast refreshed anytime we want it refreshed. Queries automatically into the Visual Crossing server. Never have to leave the, the safe and safety and comfort of Excel. Um, your users just open it and they, they get their forecast. So, that's um, pretty much all we have um, to discuss here. Again, the blog goes into a little bit more about customization if you want to remove some variables and add some new ones. If you have any questions on this whatsoever, please email us at support at visualcrossing.com um, and we will be happy to um, help you out. And as always, um, uh, go to the blog page and check it out and then um, also look at the initial page and there's some sign up links and things on the, on the first page um, to help you get started. Thanks again for your time and for um, watching this and for trying out the Visual Crossing um, weather data service. Thanks.